All right. <clears throat> Our next talk will be uh, by Mohammed Furkan Asghar. Uh, he is from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Atatürk University. And his topic will be the effect of repeated use of uh, PRAVED on serum progesterone, estrogen levels, and ovulatory follicle diameter in pubertal heifers. My name is Furkan Chachar. Uh, I am a graduate student of Islam University of Bahawalpur. Uh, got my MPhil in animal reproduction from Turkey. And currently I'm working as a business development manager in uh, CRV Genetics Cloud Agri Pakistan. Today, my topic of presentation is the effect of repeated use of progesterone releasing intravaginal devices on serum progesterone, estradiol levels, and ovulatory follicle diameters in pubertal heifers. First of all, I want to quote a slogan, which is old one, uh, but has huge impact even in modern times. That is no production without reproduction. Actually reproduction is essential for continuity of uh, dairy farming, or in other words, for sustainable dairy farming, reproduction is a necessity. In order to obtain uh, optimum results in animal reproduction, we have to use different hormones and different protocols. And there are different types of protocols, uh, which we called as synchronization protocols. These are O-Sync, Co-Sync, G6G, double uh, O-Sync or pre-Sync O-Sync. But some of these protocols like OSYNC and COSYNC comes with incorporation of the progesterone releasing intravaginal devices. These devices are actually uh, a, a type of equipment or instrument that contains progesterone in it. We put this device into the vagina of the cow for five, seven, or nine days, and these devices release progesterone slowly into the blood of the cow or a heifer uh, and mimics the activity of corpus luteum. Uh, there are multiple devices available in the market uh, nowadays. And among them, one is cedar containing 1.38 gram progesterone. And another is uh, pre delta containing 1.55 gram progesterone in it. Uh, there are multiple benefits of using these devices in cows or heifers. Uh, first is to get excellent results of synchronization. Uh, second is uh, to improve estrus expression or heat expression of the cows or heifers. Uh, third is to improve follicular quality as progesterone is essential for optimum follicular quality. And uh, the fourth is these devices works well uh, with the animals or cows having type 1 and stress or having follicles, uh, small follicles or inactive ovaries. Uh, overall, these devices improve conception rates of the cows and the heifers, but there is a one disadvantage of using these devices. That is cost. Because in normal synchronization protocol, we use PGF2 alpha or GNRH injection. But by incorporating these devices into the protocol, we are putting an extra cost, uh, which farmers can't bear or sometimes they don't want to uh, put at extra cost in it. So here I comparing uh, the cow and a heifer. Uh, as we know, 
that there is a huge difference between a cow and a heifer, but same device is being used for cow and heifer before, uh, from the beginning, from, the, uh, from its manufacturing, uh, either it is cedar containing 1.38 gram progesterone or 1.55 gram containing progesterone device pre-delta, it is being used both in cows and heifers, but there is a huge difference between a cow and a heifer. Cows have high metabolic rate, more body weight, more blood pool, more requirement of progesterone as compared to heifer, but the same device is being used. So here comes my research. Uh, I actually planned to give low level of progesterone to the heifers. How I did that? I uh, created a low progesterone environment by reusing the device and then evaluated the serum progesterone, estrogen levels, and ovulatory follicle diameters of heifers. And I compared that a reused device containing low progesterone uh, can be effective as the new device containing high progesterone. Materials and methods, I took three pubertal heifers, host and heifers, and labeled them as A, B, and C. Uh, their average uh, age was 13 months and uh, 350 kg of body weight. And they were kept under standard managemental and nutritional conditions. Uh, the design of my research was uh, divided into three periods, first, second, and third. I took at one side and another side, I took as first, second, and third use. So first of all, I took a new device and placed it into the A heifer and for seven days. And after removing it, I washed it with pyridine solution and put it into the heifer B for seven days and then into heifer C. For second period, I took a new device and inserted it into heifer B, C, and then into heifer A, and then into heifer B. And in the third period, I inserted a new device into heifer B, then into heifer C, and then into heifer A. That was the design of the research. I planned this design in order to decrease or reduce the individual effect of the heifer. And by doing so, uh, the all devices like first use, second use, and third use, all devices were used in all uh, heifers. Uh, next, the protocol I planned uh, for the heifer was I injected uh, PGF to alpha two days before the start of the protocol. At day zero, I inserted the device PRID into the, into the heifers and injected GNRH injection. At day seven, I injected PGF to alpha and removed the device. At day nine, I injected GNRH. On different days, like zero, three, five, seven, nine, I took blood samples and evaluated serum uh, progesterone levels. And at day nine, I evaluated the serum estrogen levels. At day nine, I also performed reproductive ultrasonography to measure uh, ovulatory follicle diameters. Uh, results. Uh, first of all, uh, as expected, the serum progesterone levels decreased by the used. Serum progesterone levels were maximum for the first use and the minimum for the third use, and the results were significant. Then I compared the serum progesterone levels at different days, like 0, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and results were significant. The serum progesterone levels were minimum at day 0 and day 9, uh, maximum at day three and similar at day five and day seven. Uh, next, I evaluated the interaction of use, either it is first, second or third use with different days like zero, three, five, uh, seven and nine. And the interaction was significant. And the diagram was for the first use were like that, second use and then third use. So you can see the evident difference between the uses of uh, the device, either it is first, second, or third on different days. Uh, next, I evaluated the serum progesterone levels at day nine, and the result was non-significant, but there was a numerical reduction in serum progesterone levels from first to third use. Next, I evaluated the serum uh, estrogen levels. Estrogen levels were also non-significant, but these increased 
uh, with the usage of a device. For example, the serum uh, estrogen, estrogen levels were minimum for first use and maximum for third use. Uh, in the last, I measured the follicle diameters and follicle diameter data was also non-significant, but numerically, the ovulatory follicle diameters were also higher in the third use, but lower uh, low, uh, size was minimum in the first use. So in conclusion, uh, the pro serum progesterone levels decrease with the use of device. Uh, like for first uh, use, it was maximum. For second, it decreased. And the for, uh, for the third, it was minimum. But even for the third use, CIDR, uh, the progesterone was enough to attain the synchronization results. Uh, the serum progesterone, estrogen levels, and ovulatory follicle diameters all were not affected by either it is a first used, second used, or third used cedar in heifers. So we can conclude that in heifers, the reused cedar for the second time or, or third time produced similar results as the new one, or in other words, low progesterone uh, uh, gives similar results as the high progesterone. So in conclusion, these devices either can be reused in the heifers to reduce the cost, or a new device can be made separately for the heifers in order to reduce the cost. Because as we know, in print, there is a 1.55 gram progesterone, but if we are going to decrease it uh, to the minimum level for heifers, then the cost with all uh, cost will also be reduced. So it will be beneficial for farmers and even for the industry. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can ask. Okay, okay. Like uh, as uh, actually, uh, the device is uh, a type of device which has progesterone, and progesterone is essential for normal follicular quality, and follicular quality is essential for embryo production. It is actually a question regarding embryo production. Uh, whether this reuse is going to produce good quality embryos or not. In heifers, yes, it will produce because in heifers, the requirement of progesterone is not as that in cows. But in cows, there is a uh, increase in demand of progesterone. As we know, these cows are producing high uh, milk production and these cows have high rate of metabolism. So progesterone reduced to minimum level. So. Uh, I don't recommend the uh, reuse of progesterone devices in cows, but in heifers, yes, you can use. Next, there was a question. Thank you.